David Vai, the Technical Marketing Director at AWR Group of National Instruments, and we're here in Boston for IMS 2019, and I'm sitting with my good friend and co-author, Eric Leclerc, the co-author, because we both, uh, well, you did, you did the heavy lift on a, an article, a cover story, that will be appearing in Microwave Journal in July on uh, your new GAN processes, uh, GAN on silicon, and I'm going to let you uh, Get on silicon carbide. That's it. Thank you. Gan on silicon carbide. Very important. Um, short, short gate length. Yeah. The, so, can you tell us a little bit about the what next you're process we with? intend to release is a GH15, which is a process for application up to let's say 40 gigs mm -hmm. typically, and uh, that process will be uh, evaluated and fully qualified in the uh, near September that, that year. So it means that. Uh, in September, we will be able to release a process for mm -hmm. foundry access uh, because we have a full, fully uh, open foundry access in UMS. Uh, so this process is challenging from a modeling point of view yeah. because uh, uh, non-linear electrical models need to include uh, electrothermal capability, but okay. also traps and also uh, a lot of complicated things that uh, need to be uh, taken into account in order to for example, to extract the best linearity at the device level. Okay. Um, and we have a lot of demonstrators in preparation on that process. So if, if you weren't modeling the traps, what would be, how would that impact the design? I mean, what, what, what does that benefit the designer you know, having that information incorporated into the model? What can they um, expect? It's by a different way. First, it needs a good uh, temperature modeling because there is no trap modeling without a good temperature modeling. Then we need to have also an idea of the location of the traps and the best way to take into account the different uh, time constants related to the traps in the model. Uh, this is tricky. So we already did that on GH25, and you know we have a very efficient uh, GH25 model mm -hmm. working well with a uh, microwave so office. So GH25 is yep. a quarter micron gate length. Yep. And so the, the two processes we're talking about, you're talking about, are the uh, 15, so the, the 0 0.15. Yeah, 0 0.15 and, and, micrometer okay, uh, okay. process, okay. Uh, which is the next step now, yep. because GH25 is for application up to 20, let's say 20 gigs, where the GH15 is for application up to uh, 38 to 40 gigs, and mainly for, not only, but mainly for telecom application. Okay like uh, 5G needs, but also for space. For example, we have a, a strong demand for K-band uh, <laughs> okay. uh, with a uplink at 30 gigs, a downlink at 20 gigs. We already designed a lot of uh, uh, dem demonstrator on that uh, process. Some have been funded by uh, French MODs. Some have yeah. been also uh, requested by the space administration in, in Europe. Okay. And uh, this process again will be fully released in foundry mode in the coming months. Okay, okay, that's interesting. So, what would be the practical limit on a, uh, let's say for a mimic, practical power levels that you could maybe expect out of either either process? It's uh, you know typically uh, this process is able to deliver uh, more than three to two point uh, three to six watt per millimeter mm -hmm. uh, at thirty gigs. Okay. with more than 32% uh, uh, power added efficiency, which 40, means 42? 42%, 42, okay. yes. Yep. Uh, uh, where, for example, in, at 9 gigs, so we may reach 4 watts per millimeter, which means that we can develop PA up to 10 watts or more, or 20 watts, okay. uh, without any uh, restriction or limitation. Okay. So, and uh, how, how might that compare to any other GAN products for millimeter waves? any other products out there, processes out on the market? I think uh, this uh, UMS process is uh, most probably among the two first processes over the world uh, on the 0 0.15 micrometer device. So if you compare with other sources, we really are <coughs> at the state of the art. Okay. Yeah. In terms of power added efficiency, in terms of power density, but also in terms of linearity, which is in very important yeah, for yeah. the telecom application, and also in terms of reliability, because for sure we need a good GAN device, but also we need a reliable uh, device. Sure, sure. So are there special considerations in, in, the, in the design 
of the transistor to a space qualify and to ensure greater reliability? Definitely, uh, David. You, we, for example, for GH25, which is a process which was a space evaluated in 2007, we have some specific rules given in the design book in order to apply maximum rating for space. Uh, for example, could be the voltage across the capacitors or things like that. Mm -hmm. Maximum VD voltage. Uh, and for GH15, we will do the same. So it means that as soon as the process will be internally qualified, we will uh, start the space evaluation. And at the end of the space evaluation, we will be able to provide to the customers and designers the rules set Okay, to be followed sure. for space application. Yeah. Okay, oh, excellent. Um, and, and so what are operating voltages? On it's uh, for GH25, it's up to 30 volt, where for GH15, it's 20 volt. Okay. Okay. okay, and then, so for designers, how do they access, so, so we work together yep. um, to develop process design kits, or PDKs, um, so the designers can access the, the, the components of the process and, and, and build their design. So we will be, Developing that together, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. And as soon as the process will be uh, uh, fully qualified, we will have to offer the full set of PDK, not only the nonlinear mm -hmm. model, but also the noise model for uh, LNA okay. design, also the model for switches, which are specific uh, components. Uh, and this is important also to take into account not only the power needs, but the, the fact that the uh, GAN process may be used for complex function integrating LNAs or switches or other uh, functions. And in also uh, something to be mentioned is the uh, um, definition of the stack for EM simulation, which is also important. Does it change to, for uh, compared to GH25, yeah. yes, we, we have okay. some, some change. Uh, not major one, but yeah. we have some change. For example, the substrate thickness is uh, different. Okay. Um, so we have to adjust it'll the, the PDK. Into the, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. So it'll <laughs> be incorporated to, into, the, yeah. into the PDK, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and we'll get the accuracy to the uh, EM simulation that will have the ac you know the accurate information. Definitely. The process okay. Which is needed for compact design and more and more. Uh, yeah, because today the designers are looking for high frequency, high power, but low cost. Uh, design and low-cost product. So we're we're the second day into IMS. Yeah. So you've had at least you know the better part of two days. People coming by and, and asking questions. What, what, would you comment on the uh, the interest in these processes coming out and, and some feedback you're getting and some some interesting things that you're hearing from your perspective? Definitely, it's a really good question, David. It's uh, probably the most. Uh, I would say attractive uh, topic we have. So in the window we have a, a 10 watt uh, um, uh, amplifier for 5G, mm -hmm. and this is really um, attractive uh, for people to know that and to to check when the process will be available. We, uh, I already got this morning the question about uh, microwave office PDK availability, oh, yeah. and so I answered. As, as usual, but as soon as the process will yeah. be uh, qualified, the PDK will be uh, available for designers. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. We had a conversation yesterday with a mutual customer of ours, and, uh, and, and I realized that you know, you're still dialing in the model, but you're also always developing the transistor technology too. Yeah. They sort of bootstrap each other. Made me think that it's sort of like software features. You know, It's like we're always trying to add new features to our yeah. software. You know, at some point you got to say, okay, it's a released product. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, these things, it makes you realize they're evolutionary. That there's always this march forward of the technology, and uh, you know, and it's built on all the all the work you've done in the past. So the you know, GH25 and all that work, uh, it's giving you the insights to to move the processes forward and, and provide that performance at millimeter wave which we're certainly going to be talking a lot uh, about. Especially um, because design yeah. methodology also yeah. are, are uh, changing and uh, it's more and more complex design. Uh, you yeah. know, for for example, for Doherty amplification, where we are looking for good linearity, good PA, even with a, a high level of back off, uh, it needs good model. Uh, some techniques also for modeling are requiring um, um, to take into account temperature. Some others like uh, digital predistortion mm -hmm. need to be uh, integrated during the simulation to, to check yeah. and to optimize, not only for power added efficiency of power, but also for linearity. And I would say a great advantage of UMS 
if we compare in terms of PDK, is that due to the accuracy of the nonlinear model, we are able to optimize the PA not only at the power added efficiency, but at the linearity. Okay. And we show examples uh, last uh, two days during the workshop that uh, even without digital predistortion, with some of our, for example, the last uh, uh, module front end we developed for 5G, which integrates GAN and gas, so GAN for sure on the uh, emission pass and gas for the reception uh, pass, okay. we are able to achieve a very good linearity uh, without the digital predistortion. For sure it's better with the digital yeah. predistortion, but yeah. this is a main advantage because we can optimize the PA also at the uh, linearity and from the linearity point of view. Okay, yeah, Excuse I mean, that's, that's the challenge. The, the peak PAE is usually driven into compression, yeah. so you're, you're sacrificing your linear, linearity. Yeah. So, I mean, the PA designers uh, understand this. And, you know, uh, another example I can give you is a, a KBN <laughs> for the VSAT or SATCOM application. Mm -hmm. we, we, we have more than 30% power added efficiency at uh, PSAT. But at 10 dB, 10 dB back off, yep. we have still 25% power added efficiency, okay. which is incredibly yeah. uh, good. And Very this important is, metric, uh, yeah. yeah. Someone <laughs> can say what your max is, but you know, what, what is that linearity in PAE mm -hmm. in, in where you're going to use it, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, um, uh, we talked about, you, you mentioned combining gas and GAN, so you have a mature uh, module technology, integration technology, um, within your own design services and, and as a service to your customers that you help exactly. support we, them? Exactly. Uh, so the, the, what we call um, heterogeneous integration is more at uh, R&D level than uh, our, our development level than uh, uh, just a simple offer. Yeah. But we are able today to put in, uh, for example, in two FN plastic package mm -hmm. to put together gallium arsenide and gallium nitride or other technologies all together. Uh, in order to have a full solution, including also the switches, full solution uh, with a low cost packaging, with low parasitics, and we can take into account all the parasitics during the simulation. This is uh, the front end uh, we developed for 5G. N now the next step will be to have um, more uh, advanced uh, packaging integration without uh, wire bonding. We okay. will remove the wire bonding. We will use a flip chip okay. uh, um, bonding, which will yep. uh, decrease the parasitics, mm -hmm. which will make the uh, uh, package smaller compared okay. to the standard wire bonding solution. Okay. And we have a very nice simulation and design flow for flip chip technologies. Uh, we work with some other people, I won't mention their names, yeah. but mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that, that's something we handle quite well. So we're looking forward to, to more activity in that arena. Um, is there anything else that uh, you think we need to talk about? But I, I, are I think it's designers? also interesting to mention that for PA design, we also are not only working at the level of modeling, but also at the level of design. So yeah, we need okay. to improve some techniques. For example, we are more and more using uh, some improvement near, near what we call uh, LMBA, so uh, the linear modulated uh, uh, power amplification where we can improve, it's another way compared to the Doherty uh, approach. Uh, load modulated PA are uh, a way to improve again the added efficiency. Um, so, uh, so maybe explain a little bit, load modulated PA, what, what's uh, happening it's, it's, a, it's a way uh, in few words, huh? yeah. able to explain that in few words. <laughs> okay. It's like, like a Doherty, but actually you, you replace uh, the, the signal of the auxiliary uh, amplifier okay. by a signal which is calculated uh, outside uh -huh. and the calculation will improve and then the, the you, you need an external source which is controlled by your signal and then finally you can improve the power, the power added efficiency uh -huh and the uh, linearity of the device okay. by these techniques which, which are a yeah. bit advanced. Today it's not for to more product, but yeah. it's also a way on which UMS is working for improving the um, uh, knowledge and the uh, skills about uh, MMIC yeah. design. Yeah. Because yeah. it has also to be mentioned that <coughs> we, among the product I mentioned, we also got some uh, requests for what we call ASIC. So it means, it means that we can develop 
product on request for customers. Okay. These are products that are not in our catalog, but we can develop product for these uh, applications. And for GAN today, I have to say that the, the three domain where we have a lot of ASIC activity is defense, for example, with uh, some uh, um, demand from the French or German MOD. Mm -hmm. We have also a space demand from the space yep. agencies. But uh, the last uh, poll I mentioned is about uh, telecom applications. So yeah. we have customers uh, who define their specification and then we need to develop one MMIC, what we call an ASIC, for this customer. Okay. okay. So, yeah, yeah. And, and so, you mentioned you did a workshop. So you're very engaged and you've worked with us in the past. That's how we ended up developing this, this uh, content that's going to be the uh, cover story in Micro Journal in July. But uh, that came from your presentation of, of this work at one of our uh, design forums, our yep. AWR design forum, which is a, uh, uh, a kind of like a user group for PA designers that we hold in a European Microwave Week, and you presented there. And uh, you know, so that's a, probably a large part of what you do as well is customer education. Um, so you gave a workshop here. What was that? Uh, the nature of that workshop? The workshop on Sunday. You mean it was uh, really dedicated about the. Uh, all the product we have defined and we are working on for the 5G application, okay. especially the millimeter wave one, because we have also activity below six gigs, but uh, the workshop was really dedicated to uh, millimeter wave uh, okay. applications, uh, taking into account the need for high integration, more and more um, compact packaging solution. Mm -hmm. And uh, the trend for long term now is about what we call SIP, or with, and then yep. wafer level yep. package, where we have to create a combination of MMICs from different technologies. Yeah. Could be gas, GAN, but also Silicon World uh, MMICs yeah. or uh, functions. And we combine all together these MMICs inside a, a kind of module and we, we create the package around that. Okay. And for that activity, UMS is a leader of the a project like the GAN2 uh, 5G GAN2 program, which is a program uh, in the frame of the H2020 European program, involving uh, eight countries, 17 partners, and UMS is the leader of this uh, okay. big program, yeah. linked and uh, turning around um, packaging R&D and uh, packaging for the future. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're very happy to partner with you because you are a leader of technology, and I think it's a win-win for us, it's a win-win for our customers that. Uh, and we work so closely together, so we're able to Definitely. offer the, yeah. Definitely, David, because we, we, I should say, again, this morning, we had some requests from customers yeah. who need the microwave office PDK, and we are really pleased to work with you on the implementation of this uh, complex modeling in the PDK in the microwave office uh, solution. Okay, and um, for anyone, if you didn't answer any questions yet, uh, um, welcome to come to your site and uh, find more content on, yeah, on, on definitely. We will be pleased to, yeah. to welcome them and to right. find the appropriate solution, whatever the challenge are from design point of view, from packaging okay. point of view, from process point of view, okay. whatever. So we're, we're a few months away from European Microwave Week. We'll see yeah. you in Paris and we'll, definitely. we'll get to catch up and yeah. you know, we'll, have a, we'll have a kid at that point. We'll yeah. have the devices yeah. and it'll, it'll be exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you for your thank time. You. Thank you, David. Okay. Thank you. Have a good show. Thank you. Thank you.